All right, let's just get down to it. My name is Holly and my husband and I have five kids, two who are autistic. Our seven-year-old Ezra is more nonverbal autism. He's level three, which means he needs more support. And then Simon, our three-year-old, is more mild autism. And he's coming up the stairs right now. Hi, you wanna join us? In this video, we're gonna talk about meltdowns. This is kind of a really weird thing that we did but it helped him tremendously. When Ezra was two, three to four years old, he would have really bad meltdowns, usually in the middle of the night, and he would hit his head against the wall. He would scream. When Ezra was this young and he was having these hard times at night, one thing that we would do is get, we would offer him drinks because we thought that he was maybe a little dehydrated and he didn't like drinking and that was, really difficult because we wanted to keep him hydrated, especially if he had a fever at night or something like that. If he wasn't eating very well, which happened all the time, happened, it still happens all the time. There were some times where he got so dehydrated we had to just take him to the hospital and put an IV in him and that was awful, like completely awful. And so we, would, we, we do everything we can to make sure that that doesn't get to that point where we have to do that. The ER is not a fun place for anyone, especially an autistic person, mainly because there's so much of the environment that you can't control. I would just sit there with him in the room and offer him things, try and help him in any way I could. But a lot of times you just have to write it out when, when it gets bad. Because of those experiences that we had with Ezra when he was two, three, and four, I became more aware of his triggers to help him so that he didn't get to that really bad full on meltdown. Some of Ezra's triggers are loud noises and crazy places where there's a lot going on. Ezra is overstimulated visually. And so one of his triggers is too many choices. It actually makes him upset if I give him five different choices to, of things to eat. So we will give him choices, but we'll only give him like two, three at the most. For Simon, a, a really big trigger that triggers his anxiety that can lead to a meltdown is smells. He just smells things that I didn't even know how to smell. He will smell everything. He'll grab a toy and smell it. He'll he'll like to take people's hair, especially when he first meets them or when they, when they first come through the door. He'll give them a hug and he'll smell their hair. So because of that, he's really sensitive to any strong smells, especially in the kitchen. And so one thing that has helped him is that now in the summer, we are able to do this. We have dinner outside on the deck and there are a lot less smells out there. You know, it's open air and he doesn't have to be stuck in the kitchen smelling all the smells that he obviously has a hard time with. We post daily of our unique normal, so please consider subscribing. When you are in a public place, let's say you're at the park or you are at the grocery store and your child is on full blown meltdown on the floor, kicking, screaming, maybe even hurting himself or herself, what do you do? That is a really good question. Um, I've been there. Um, and first of all, I want you to just focus on the needs of your child. That's difficult to do sometimes because usually you focus on, oh, what everyone's thinking or, oh, how you're feeling. So what we would do is we actually found out that he liked popsicles, so we would freeze like Gatorade and we do Pedialyte popsicles and he would eat that ice. This is kind of a really weird thing that we did, but it helped him tremendously. I was breastfeeding Simon at the time because he's a newborn. And so we would freeze my milk and they, we called them mama's milk popsicles and it actually worked amazingly well. He not only got the vitamins, nutrients from mama's milk, but he really liked the taste. Some kids can just get into meltdown really quickly, but with Ezra at this time when he was younger, we could kind of see the triggers like, oh, he's, his anxiety is getting really high. We need to you know, stop what we're doing. We need to focus on him, make sure that he gets liquids, um, make sure that he gets his popsicles and mama's milk, whatever we were doing at the time. When Ezra was small and would have meltdowns during the day, one thing that helped was I would take him into a tight space. He usually liked the stair rail, and so I would put him in the stair rail. Sometimes I, I would hold him if he let me hold him. When he was little and he was like one and two, he would usually let me hold him, and then I would sing to him just really, really softly, like a little lullaby type song, and that would help him um, just kind of breathe through that anxiety that he felt and that, that over sensory 
meltdown that he was having. Please put in the comments about how you deal with your own meltdowns or how you help your kids deal with meltdowns. I know some triggers for autistic people are like a new place, new, anything new, something that they hadn't expected, maybe a change in routine. Another trigger can be sensory overload, like too much sensory input, like Simon smelling stuff in the kitchen. And another one is you know, feeling so much energy that you want like deep compressions, your sensory seeking to help calm yourself, regulate your body. A lot of times autistic people will stim and honestly, I think everyone stims. Another thing that has really helped us is to limit screen time. We've noticed that I you know if we need to keep our children quiet, like for example, I'm making this video, both Ezra and Simon are on screen right now. But if we limit that time, then we do have less meltdowns and less anxiety throughout the day. So we do limit times, we have schedules so that they can anticipate when it's time to get off the iPad or it's time to stop watching TV. And of course, not all autistic people are the same. Everyone is so different. And we hope that as we share these, we can really help educate people and help spread awareness for autism. And it turns out that Ezra really loves having Simon in his room. Simon really gets scared when he's alone and we were really nervous about Ezra's reaction. They actually help each other sleep. If one starts screaming, the other one will like start making noises and we've noticed it's actually a comfort that they've, they've been able to build this bond and help each other. <laughs> and so that's been a huge blessing. Um, Ezra has a really big twin size safety bed that's six feet tall and we love this safety bed. It has helped him not have meltdowns in the middle of the night. It has really helped him not scream in the middle of the night. And um, as you can see here, sometimes he'll scream and actually be happy about it. You might notice here that he just has mattresses on the floor. He doesn't do very well with furniture in his room because he'll tip it over, he'll hit his head against the furniture, he'll try and move it. We didn't want to have a regular bed in his room. We knew that that wouldn't work for him. And so we, the idea came to us like, oh, let's just do mattresses and give him space. He actually didn't do very well with that. He does better with the safety bed where he's actually enclosed. So sometimes you just have to try things out with autistic kids because their response reaction may be different than you expect. Remember, if you have an autistic child, you're in good company. We used to live in an RV and we traveled to all the national parks in the US. When we went to Black Canyon of the Gunnison, Simon had a meltdown. You can see that video here. So that's five kids in an RV and two who are autistic. Ezra and Simon both love nature and they really enjoyed going to all these national parks. And when we got back, we sold the RV, we moved into rental that we're living in now. And you can see our home tour right here if you wanna see our house that we live in. In the RV, we learned a lot and we post daily of our unique normal. Please consider subscribing. So just this past year, we had Thanksgiving with my brother at his house and he has an autistic child and he also works with special needs kids. Um, so he's pretty awesome. It was great to see him handle my my two younger boys um, because he knew what he was doing, you know, and I actually learned quite a bit with him. We had an instance where Simon saw a red car and he decided that that was gonna be his. Because of his autism, it was harder for him to understand why he couldn't have that Lightning McQueen car. Um, his obsession was definitely more intense because of his autism and then it was harder for us to communicate what we wanted from him and why he wasn't getting it. My brother helped him get his emotions down, helped him communicate um, what he wanted in, you know, communication in an effective way. And then he gave him what he wanted. And that video is right here. We need a soft voice. So we can use a car. Or we need to use a nice soft voice. And we say, please. So please. We love please. Go Simon go. can use a car. We love cars. Oh, wow. We love Lightning McQueens. Mm. Lightning McQueens are the best. Mm. Mm. Chicago <laughs> Wait, no. I Thanks for making him work for it. That's what we do. Encourage behaviors we want. Yeah. We reward the ones that we're after. And I think that's one of the main differences right now between Simon and Ezra is Simon can right. get himself 
like to calm down and sign and and, right. and go uh huh. Right, because you can understand multiple steps in advance. One thing that really helps Ezra um, and that we've really been pushing with him is to get him to communicate through his iPad because any kind of verbal communication causes so much anxiety for him. Keep in mind, he does have apraxia of speech as well on top of his autism and ADHD. And so that makes it really difficult for him. So we give him the opportunity to practice with the iPad. And as he's been practicing with the iPad, that has really brought down his anxiety and um, lessened the amount of meltdowns that he has. And here's a video where we compare the differences between speech delay and autism. And here's our autism playlist.